So I'm really excited about today. Uh, in this video, what we're going to talk about is what I did this weekend, some exciting things. Uh, second, what am I working on when it comes to penetration testing? And then third, what's going on in the news? I haven't, it's been about a couple of days since I have been able to check out the news and find out what's going on in the cybersecurity world, especially in cybersecurity month. So let's check that out. So let's hack at it. So this weekend, I ended up going up to Ottawa, Canada, and my fiance and myself uh, went uh, and had some experiences. We went to a museum. We went to well, actually a couple museums. Uh, saw Chip Coffee. You see us here with Chip Coffee. Uh, he was a psychic slash medium. Uh, we went to the spa, and one of the spas there, it's like a Scandinavian spa. Uh, and just had some fun and just kind of relax and unwind. I think uh, it's very it's very needed to be able to, you know, work hard, play hard, to relax and unwind, to disconnect from, you know, all the, the technology, especially with us being so consumed with it, you know, that it's the iPhone, smartphone, laptop, desktop, servers, routers, switches, firewalls, you name it. We're like just consumed with it around us. So to kind of give our body a break and just disconnect for a little bit and in our mind as well. So that's what I ended up doing this weekend, uh, just having a little bit of fun and relaxing and unwinding. And I think it's really good to do that, to have that work-life balance, uh, especially as you're getting in IT security. And I'm going to be talking about this on Thursday, which I'm really excited about. Uh, this Thursday, I'll be speaking at DEF CON uh, 416, which is DEF CON Toronto. It was actually on my dream board. Uh, I'll take a picture here. You can see it on my dream board that, I wanted to speak about uh, DEF CON about how to become in security, and, and this was posted in December of last year. So just things that manifest and things that happen. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, I had my presentation ready, just uh, submitted it yesterday, so that's all in. Penetration testing. This morning I've been studying – excuse me. Uh, I got the hiccups. Uh, this morning I've been uh, reading – and listening to a video about wireless penetration uh, testing and how to kind of breach uh, WPA2, how to, how to create a man in the middle attack uh, using Kali Linux. So really exciting, uh, just stuff that intrigues me and interests me, how, how you do that. And it's funny, and I'm sure you find this as well, once you start seeing these compromises and what people do, you realize how easy it is and how how much we might not have known or been aware of. You might have known it. You might have been like, oh yeah, I know man in middle attack. But you not, might not be like your radar might not be on. Like if you're in an airport, if you're at a coffee shop, if you're at a store, you might not really be cautious of, you know, hold on, I'm not going to connect to that Wi-Fi because, you know, is it really the store's Wi-Fi? Is it really this restaurant's Wi-Fi? Or is it someone sitting a couple tables over with their laptop, you know, creating a, you know, an access point? So pretty crazy stuff to think about as, as we're going throughout our day, especially as IT security. And remember, like I talk about this, at, end, at the end of every video, software's hack of being connected is vulnerable. This is one of those access points that are, are potentially vulnerable for us because we're just not thinking about it. Uh, one thing tip kind of a thing that I recommend if you have connected to multiple access points uh, and what I mean by is you've gone to a hotel you've gone to Starbucks you've gone to a store and you have them saved in your 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 smartphone device or iPad you know or even in your your laptop you have them saved as access points remove them I remove them from your, your list. As soon as you're finished with that access point, go into your wireless settings and remove them and clear them. Uh, the one point is that from what I'm reading, and I'm going to go into deep, deeper into this as I read more and I learn more, but it's a way to compromise and learn passwords. Even if it's learning passwords for the access point, right, it's a way that some hackers do that. So, just crazy. It's crazy just all the things I'm learning. And as I learn them, I'm going to share them. 
They might not be articulate. They might not be full information, but I'm going to do my best. As I develop and as I learn, I'll provide more and more information. So just remember the key point today is, you know, go through all your Wi-Fi access points that you have connected with, with your smart device, if it's iPhone, Samsung, you know, whatever device, uh, I'm trying to think of laptop, you know, if you have an iPad or a tablet, any of those, go through those and clear all the access points that you've connected to and just make sure you're connected to the ones that you need. Like if you have a home wireless network and that's it, try to limit what you want to do. Oh, and key point number two, if your Wi-Fi is set up to, and hopefully WPA2, make sure you have a long, complicated password. When I was, they were, in the video that we were showing was a dictionary attack. And watching when people had like, you know, six characters to maybe even 10 characters long, over time that can be compromised, right? especially with people using things that are common phrases, common words, All right, So you want to use complex passwords, uh, lowercase, uppercase, special characters, numbers, right? And try to make it, this is my recommendation, try to make it at least, at least minimum 15 characters, if not longer. I know my, myself, I'm going up to like 18 and above, all right, right now. And as some of the devices can accept more, I'm going to go higher, all right? Just because I know these dictionary attacks and brute force attacks, it makes it so much harder for them to, to compromise them if the password is uh, complex and it's long. So that's just my key points, just again, as you're going through. And yes, I know some of the, the grumbling you hear is, oh, do I have to memorize that password? You know, I just want to make it easy for myself. If it's easy for you, it's easier. It's twice as easy for a hacker because their intention is to break that password. So if you're like, I'm just going to keep it simple so I can memorize it or I can, uh, I can have it in memory for later, don't do that because hackers are like, yes. You're the person I want. You're the person that's going to make it easy for me to get in because if you make it simple for yourself, it's going to be twice as easy for me to use the tools that are are available to hackers to be able to get in. So please, please, please make your passwords as complex as as possible. And yes, if you have to save them in in another document to, to keep track of them, do that. You know, and what I would recommend, and here's one strategy you know, encrypt that document and make sure that your document has, you have multiple documents. If you have one for your banking and that's encrypted with a separate password and then you have one for, you know, for your social media, right? And you're trying to use, you know, different passwords, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Pinterest, Snapchat, you name it. Like all those separate passwords in this file encrypted with another password on top. Yes, I know this is is complex, but this is the way you secure yourself. This is the way you protect yourself. We're, and the funny thing is, you're going to do these strategies and the person next to you, the person that's a colleague, are, is not going to do them. And what's going to happen is you're going to hear, damn it, like my YouTube got, account got uh, hacked, my Twitter account, my bank account. You know, what am I supposed to do? Like, oh my God, it's so frustrating. And then you're going to be like, oh, well, have you tried the strategy? I'm doing this. And so far, you know, knock on wood and nothing's happened, you know, and I, I'm, I'm keeping up this, this strategy. It's, it's working to secure them. I, I haven't had a problem. It's because you're taking that next step. Now, remember, I'm not saying that it will never be compromised, but you're making it complex and harder for them to do it. The harder it is, you know, the longer it will take them and potentially they'll move on, right? Because again, if it's taking weeks and months for them to, to crack your password or to compromise you, then they'll move on to someone that's easier, right? Unless, again, there's an intent there. Now, we'll talk about that later, about why hackers do what they do, but just keep in mind, keep your, your passwords complex, flush out your all your Wi-Fi access points and only have the ones in your device that you use on a consistent basis, and then, you know, complex passwords, So that's it for this section. Let's get over to the news and see what's happening in the cybersecurity news for October. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into the the news right now, which is kind of timely. Uh, The article that I found today that I thought was really interesting was it's called 
crack K R A C K, uh, critical key uh, reinstallation attack against WPA2 Wi Fi protocol. Uh, and this was, I found this on the Hacker News, so the, uh, the link to the article will be below. So I'm going to read this out to you because there's a, a lot of information here that I want to make sure is covered. Uh, security researchers have discovered several key management vulnerabilities in the core of Wi-Fi protected access to protocol that that can be allow that could allow an attacker to hack into your Wi-Fi network and eavesdrops on the internet communication. WPA2 is a 13-year-old Wi-Fi authentication scheme widely used to secure Wi-Fi connections, but the standard has been compromised impact almost all uh, impacting almost all Wi-Fi devices including in our homes and businesses along with the network companies that build them uh, dubbed crack key reinstallation attack so some of the highlights that I was highlighting through the article but I really recommend you go read the article share it with everyone you know family members friends business owners your clients just make sure everyone knows about this because it's like it says it's affecting almost everyone so some of the highlights one uh, crack attack does not help attackers recover the targeted Wi-Fi passwords. Instead, it allows them to decrypt Wi-Fi users' data without cracking or knowing the actual password. Changing your Wi-Fi password will not prevent the crack attack. So I know some people are going, okay, you know, I just make a, a, a more complicated password, and that's not going to happen if you're, you know, you're making for your like, you know, you hide your SSID, make a, a stronger password. That's not going to help. Second, uh, the research title, Key Reinstallation Attack Forces Nonce Reuse in WPA2. Uh, and this has been published by uh, several gentlemen that I can't pronounce their name, but uh, check it out. Uh, a lot of people have done some research to figure this out. Now, how does it work? For a successful crack attack, an attacker needs to trick a victim into reinstalling an, all, an already in use key, which is achieved by manipulating and replaying cryptographic handshake messages. When the victim reinstalls the key associated with the parameters such as the incremental transmit packet number, nonce, and receives packet numbers, i.e. replay counter, are, are reset to their initial value, the researchers write. Essentially, essentially, to guarantee security, a key should only be used should be only installed stalled and used once. Unfortunately, we find this is not guaranteed by the WPAT protocol. By manipulating the cryptographic handshakes, we can abuse the weakness in practice. Uh, decrypting of packets is possible because of key reinstallation attacks, causes the transmission nuance, nonce, sometimes also called packet numbers or initialization vectors, to be reset to zero. As a result, the same encryption key is used with nonce values that have already been used in the past, uh, the researchers say. So again, read the article, go watch the video. They actually show them doing it. So it's like mind-blowing, right? Just because as I'm studying, you know, how to breach and pen test, you know, Wi-Fi access points. I was studying it today, and and I'll be doing it a little bit this week. It's just like, oh, but by the way, and then here's a news article saying, by the way, WPA2 is not as secure as you might think, and we've already showed you kind of some vulnerability, some you know, ways to compromise it in in courses. But now they're showing that you don't have to even compromise the SSID. You don't have to compromise the password. Now you can just you know decrypt the communication. So it's just like, oh, you know, we always go find that we're chasing, we're going that next level. So hopefully they come up with a patch there in the article, they actually say they're hoping that uh, the developers uh, are starting to come out with patches for this and some way of just securing it. But right now there, there isn't. So you just be very mindful of, you know, different ways. Now, something just on the top of my mind, and I like to com you to comment below, People keep talking about using VPN connections, right, to secure it. But in my understanding of VPN, you need a, v, uh, a virtual private network to connect to. So if you're, and this is where the challenge runs, if you are at Starbucks and you're just connected to the internet, you're going to Facebook, you're going to uh, your email, anything along that line, creating a VPN connection, if you're a private business, might not be as easy as like if you're working for a, co a corporation that has a Citrix VPN or something set up. So I'd love to hear your comment below. How would you do that? How would you do, set up a VPN 
for an individual, for a personal uh, use to create that security, that connection, if they're connecting from Starbucks, Wi-Fi, just to the internet, just to their social network. I love to hear your comments below. You know, again, I want to be very transparent. I'm on the journey of becoming a cybersecurity professional, so I'm constantly learning, and I will never, ever say I'm an expert because as we see, you learn something, you start learning it, you start to kind of develop, and then all of a sudden it, it goes out the door and now you have to learn something new. So I'm a student really, and then this the, the to be completely transparent, I'm a student of cybersecurity and I love it. I love because I'm gonna keep learning, keep developing, and that's my mindset and that's what I how I label myself. But as I get out there, people want to call me and, and relate to me in, in, in different terms. But right now I'm a student of cybersecurity. I love it, I enjoy it, and this is what this is what's showing with Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi compromises. We really need to keep being a student of cybersecurity and keep learning, implementing, learning, implementing, testing, and just keep doing that. So that's it for today's video. I don't want to go too long. Uh, just don't forget, software is hackable. Being connected is vulnerable. I'll see you next video.